from Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The winner of the Technology Innovation Challenge geared towards improving underground mine safety was recognized and showcased at a ceremony in Johannesburg last month. Darren Parker tells us more. Mining technology company Roytech Mining was honored as the winner of the Rock Hazard Identification and Safe Removal Innovation Challenge by the Mandela Mining Precinct and the Minerals Council South Africa at a ceremony held at Witts University in Johannesburg on February 22nd. The challenge, which was held in partnership with mining companies Sibanye Stillwater and Impala Platinum, was aimed at identifying novel solutions in rock hazard identification and safe rock removal with a focus on reducing falls of ground and improving worker safety. Traditionally, falls of ground have, have been a problem in the South African mines, particularly the hard rock mines. And uh, one of the processes that has been the cause of many uh, a death in the industry has been the process of uh, entering an area that's been recently mined. Um, the rock is usually um, disturbed because of a blast um, and therefore um, we need to examine that rock and make sure that it's stable and in that process of examining the rock uh, we have actually result uh, we've actually um, had the situation where uh, people have actually been killed because the very rocks that they're examining um, are falling on top of them or fell on top of them and so the idea is that we needed to modernize the way we did that uh, we needed kind of a more technical way of identifying which rocks were potentially um, capable of coming loose and falling on people and so the challenge was uh, two parts the one was to ident to have an instrument that we could identify the rocks that were loose and the second part of the challenge would be to, uh, to actually identify a tool that we could bring those rocks down safely, uh, remove them without injuring anyone. Um, today's event was all about the first challenge, um, which was very successful. We were able to um, have a number of people that responded to our request and um, we were able to uh, identify a winner. And um, all of the events, all the uh, technologies that we saw today, um, in some way or another, were designed to kind of um, give us an idea of what the rock was actually doing, or the integrity of the rock, if you like. Um, so that uh, is what we were, um, the really the fundamental reason why we ran this program was to come up with a tool and this is certainly not the end of the process we've put up prize money for a million rand for the winner um, and clearly that's not just money that <laughs> they can spend on their own uh, interests it's basically we've given them guidelines as to the things we want them to pursue now with this technology which needs further improvement to satisfy our needs in the industry so that's what will be happening from here on uh, we'll give them guidance, we'll meet with them, um, and we will um, give direction and have milestones um, uh, that we want them to achieve in the future. Other finalists in the challenge were online collaboration platform Stratify, mining technology company Ramjack Technology Solutions, and Canadian industrial technology company Rockmass Technologies. Raytech was chosen as the winner um, for a number of reasons. Um, their technology was quite advanced. Um, in other words, they were, they've already used their technology um, to good effect. They actually have a, they've shown that they can identify fractures um, beyond the face that we look at. Uh, in other words, into the rock. They can look a little bit into the rock. Um, clearly, we are interested in what's happening on the surface, but often um, what happens on the surface is being dictated by what's happening beyond. There are fractures that go into the rock and their technology is able to look fairly deeply into that rock. Um, so that was one of the reasons. They are a big company with um, a lot of um, know-how in terms of research and development um, and we felt that they would be a good partner to work with. They are a South African company um, and um, they have very good people that uh, understand the mining industry, understand our problem, 
Um, but above all, I think their technology was the one that uh, made, was closest to giving us um, very good solutions to our problem and would be quite easily adapted um, to a lot of different uh, scenarios, uh, not only tabular narrow slo sloping, but also board and pillar mining. It can be used in coal mines, which have softer rock. They could be used in hard rock as well. While the first part of the challenge has now been concluded, focusing on rock hazard identification, the second part of the challenge, which seeks to find ways to safely remove hazardous rocks, remains open. We actually, while we were running this challenge, parallel to it, we were running another challenge uh, to find out if there was technology in, um, in the public domain um, worldwide uh, to actually address the safe removal. And the sad thing was we, we only had two responses and both of them were very, very um, expensive solutions um, and were also um, a little bit too big for the kind of uh, solution we wanted. Uh, one must understand that we are wanting to help the people um, who are entering fairly confined spaces on a daily basis. So every working place on every South African mine has to be examined. Uh, we just didn't see those solutions that were forthcoming as um, cheap enough and uh, practical enough to be used in the average soap or even a mine opening. And so we have uh, we've, uh, moved on from that and we're going to continue that uh, search, uh, but we are going to modify the terms of reference for that. So we're going to be very much more specific, um, looking at perhaps uh, dictating to those that want to compete um, for much simpler technology, um, much lighter technology, um, something that could be uh, cheap enough for every single working panel to have one available to people. One of the things that came out was um, exoskeletons. And um, these are um, parts that you wear to strengthen the human body. And we feel that that might be one of the challenges or one of the things that we could pursue um, as a solution, a, a semi-solution. So, in other words, the user will be uh, strengthened. One of the big problems with the current technology of a pinch bar is they're very heavy and it takes a lot of energy to actually use them. And uh, the average person, perhaps after five or ten minutes, is quite exhausted. Um, with an exoskeleton, we might even be able to use that same technology, the old pinch bar, which um, is not the greatest technology, but at least it is um, something that does work. Um, and by giving a person an exoskeleton, one could use that. It would, you could even lengthen it because now they are made stronger, the individuals made stronger. They could reach further and um, do the work of pinch barring, but they would be further removed from the problem of the rock. So you can see it's saying, well, maybe we can use the old technology and just by strengthening the user, we could move them further away. Because that is the big danger, that if you use the old technology, you inevitably, right under the very rocks um, you, you're trying to deal with, are the very rocks that could fall on you when you're doing it. Um, and the problem has always been, um, particularly in higher stoping widths, maybe um, two to three meters, that you cannot have a pinch bar long enough to get far enough away to to actually deal with the rock, you inevitably end up standing right underneath it. One of the things we've suggested that uh, that might be an idea is to uh, embark on a hackathon, which is really um, a kind of a, an open innovation challenge, but at a much lower level, we would go to universities, to final year students in, in uh, the universities of South Africa and even overseas, with mechanical engineering departments and say to them, look, this is our challenge. And uh, we kind of put it up to students to come up with new ideas that we might then take and develop further with kind of more developed companies. That's Creo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.